MMA odds break on Frank Trigg. That actually is not a caveman. It's not Brendan Fraser from that old stinky 80s movie with uh, Polly Shore. It's actually uh, Demacio Page. What the hell, son? They allow <laughs> that? Uh, just growing it out right now. Um, I'm actually doing a hair drive June 6th, so it, it should be all coming off June 6th. Well, if you go and look at your fight photos and your bio sheet, that ain't what you look like. <laughs> No, it, it's funny because uh, people have to d- take like, a second take on me. They're like, I think it's him. I'm not sure if it's him. Then they see the tattoos on the arms, and then they get like the courage to come up and ask me. If you didn't actually call me from your Skype account to my Skype account, I would have second-guessed if I saw you walking down the street, for sure. You probably would have gave me change. Um, <laughs> no, I don't, I, don't give, I don't give bonus change unless they have a sign. <laughs> if you have a sign, I give you a change. If you don't have a sign, you're just walking by looking like, hey, you got, can you sprint? No, man, you got to have a sign. You have a sign, I'll give you money. No sign, you're out. <laughs> and the funnier the sign, the more money I give you. I gave some guy, I gave some guy 20 bucks the other day. Nice. His sign was... A while was, back, I, I had some guy ask me for change. I said, hey, um, how about I go take you to get some food? He says, do I look like a damn bum? I don't want no food. I'm like, you were just asking for change. What's wrong with you? <laughs> This dude had a sign. My guy had a sign that said, let's be honest. I moved to Vegas to be a professional gambler. I lost, and I'm not buying food with this money. I'm going to get drunk. I was like, dude, that's your sign. Here's 20 bucks. Go get hammered. Just got to give it to him. Come on, man. You can't. No, He's like, no kids. God bless. I was like, all right. All right. Go for it. So how is it training with that long ass hair? Because you're like two and a half inches on your chin. You got, I mean, your hair is like a, a straight up old fashioned mushroom. You're not old enough to know what a mushroom <laughs> is. A mushroom is like, you know, that's when you comb your hair out straight, you get it straight and then curl it under. You have a mushroom. Yeah, no, I get a nice little curl under. It looks all right. Uh, it's cool with me. It gets in my face every once in a while when I'm training. I think it's more of a, I guess it's a more frustrating towards my training partners and myself because they get a, Mouthful of hair. Right. Inhale it. And when they're in close and trying to pass exactly. your guard or try to take it down wrestling, they inhale all your hair. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> how often How often do you wash it? Is, are you one of those guys that waits like a week? I, it has to be luxurious. I'm, I can't wash it every day. It's be luxurious. No, nah, I wash it almost every day. I was going to say. It doesn't Jesus. bother me. Man. I'm not a girl. I don't need to worry about the rules about washing hair. What's your uh, boyfriend say about your hair now? <laughs> <laughs> You could ask her right here. She's right here, sitting right next to me. <laughs> what does What does she think about it? Is it bad? Is it cute? Is it? She wants you to cut it. What? No, she wants me to keep it. Really? Yeah. Man, you better. Nope. But cut that off. <laughs> you know what you need? You need a, a old old fashioned chin, one of those douchebag chin strap mustache <laughs> things, and like a real short, short, high and tight. That's what you need. Uh. No. no. <laughs> No, I'm good without it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. This is good. All right, let's talk about Garcia. He's your opponent coming up on Legacy Fighting Championships 31. What? I mean, what does he bring that you haven't seen? I mean, you, you're still training at Winkle John and Jackson's, right? Yeah. So um, what's he going to bring in that you don't get to see every day with everyone in their training? You know, the kids, uh, I like the kid. He fought in a car with me. Uh, he came up to me real respectful. Um, nothing against him, you know, but I'm going to go out there and do what I have to do. Um, I think what he give, brings is just frustration to the table. He just keeps on going, and he throws big haymakers, big rights, big lefts, and he, you can't put the kid away. You know, it showed through uh, through Henry Cejudo. He just tried to take him out. He couldn't take him out. The kid's just durable. And that's, I think, the biggest, you know, uh, thing about him is, is he's hard to put away. You know, i got to conserve my energy and... and and fight smart. Can't get too. I can't gas myself out. Well, added to that too. Remember, against Henry, he broke his hand at the beginning of the second round and had to have plates and pins put in the next week. And Henry couldn't put him away, and he only had one hand, and it was shattered. So this kid's got a yeah. real tough, tough heart. But he's also got that memory of punching a guy in the head and shattering your hand and having surgery. And I don't care what anybody says. That mentality, that memory of having surgery and going underneath general anesthetic and having you know eight weeks of rehab before you actually start punching something again really messes with your mind when you're in a tough, tough position and you, you make it a tough battle. It's going to mess them a little bit. Is part of your plan to make it a real old school beat down street fight? Um, I'm just going to fight how I fight, you know, as long as I stay long and, and I have to do what I have to do. I'm, 
I'm going to come out on top like always. What else does he have besides that big overhand, you know, his big heavy right, his big, he throws a lot of hooks. He doesn't throw very straight. His punches, they throw, he's a little more of a, an angle hooker. Besides using your length and besides his hands, his hand game, what is the other thing you have to be worrying about? And we already talked about his heart. There's something, there's a, what else is in his game you have to worry about when you're competing against him? Um, I think he's deceptively strong. He looks pretty strong in there. You know, he, he doesn't look too strong with his frame, but everybody I've seen, every fight I've seen of his, he's pretty strong. He, he can manhandle handle some of the guys. The only guy he couldn't really push around is, was Henry, but Henry has great wrestling, like everybody knows. And that was the thing that I saw, too, and watched tape on him. You know, when I sat down, I said, look, I got to get some tape on this cat. Let me figure him out a little bit. Because I haven't seen him. I haven't a chance to watch him that much. So yeah. I go, like, do some cramming with him. And he seems to be one of those guys that's physically powerfully strong, can bench press, can squat, can deadlift a lot of weight. But that's not fight strength. There's a difference in no. fight strength. The guy turned in the corner and he's, you know, you, you've cut the angle. You've hit him with three hooks. You've cut the angle on him. He's turned to face you and you push him to the side. That's all angling. Have you been working still diligently on your, on your stand-up striking footwork? Uh, you know what? I've been working on a lot. It's, um, I've always been gifted with a lot of power in my hands, and uh, I've early on my in my career, I take it for granted. Mm -hmm. And uh, Demetrius Johnson, Brian Bowles, and Brad Pickett exposed it. <laughs> you know, they knew I have a lot of power. They're like, "Hey, move around, move around, weather the storm," and and then we got a shot to beat the guy. Yep. And now it's just me uh, challenging it right, uh, putting it where I need to put it, and not. Um, getting overexcited, and the and the angles is key, movement is key, a lot of giving and going, and and, and making people move the way I want them to move. Just how I used to do in wrestling, you know, what I'm saying wrestling, you just don't shoot at somebody. You got to make them take a step forward for you to take your outside single. You got to make them move this way if you want to take your double. You got to shift the head to to do whatever you need to do. Same thing. I'm just applying it now to fighting. You know, and one of the side notes every time you fight for legacies that you know. Dana White, Sean Shelby, Joe Silver are watching the fights. They're looking for guys to bring back the UFC. And sometimes it actually hurts a UFC card because they're bringing in so many guys from the UFC. And, they're in, you know, Mick and, and Colin are so good about, hey, UFC calls you, you got to go. We've talked about this before. You don't, the pressure of them watching isn't going to bother you. That You don't care about them watching. I mean, you have tons of people watching all the time. Them watching you is not going to add any more pressure to you. But have, does having a good performance, though, and showing that, that – You've changed and adapted your style than the last time people saw you when you fought in the UFC and, and had those those losses in a row against Johnson, Bowles, and, and Pickett. Like, does, is that more important to you to show that, look, I've adapted and I've grown as a fighter than than actually having higher ups and big wigs watching you from other organizations? You know what? I, um, nothing against Alex Sakaris. He's a great fighter, but I totally mind fucked myself against that fight. I was worried about so much to perform so good and not to get caught in a stupid triangle. What do I do? I get caught in a stupid triangle. I put so much pressure. I'm over that. I'm, I'm a veteran of the sport. You know and I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm here to make myself happy now. I'm, I'm not worried about anybody. As long as I'm happy and I do what I got to do, I'm going to perform. And I, so I, I'm not putting that extra pressure on myself. I'm just going to go out there and have fun. You know, I'm an old man already and I got to get it done. Are you only making money through fights right now? Uh, no, I own properties too, so I do. I own two other rentals. I go over there and I fix those up. I, I'll find side jobs here and there. But you you make enough money to survive, not fighting. So you're right. So you're fighting because you'd love to fight, and because so yeah, the I, I, I money spend more that. money fighting than I do making on the side. So you figure I do my strength and conditioning and pay my coaches. I'm paying two thousand dollars a camp or more, yeah. and I'm I'm not even make, I'm making like, yeah, I'm not even making. Yeah, you walk, you, you <laughs> own, if you, please, I, I've been there. You walk out of there and you, you pay everybody off the way you're supposed to pay them. You take care of people the way you promised you would take care of them at the beginning of training camp. And you're like, wow, I, I'm short a hundred bucks. I have to go get a hundred dollars to pay off my last guy. Like I'm screwed. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like, oh crap, I still have a car payment. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, yeah, I've been there, and it's not it's not all fam glum. And it, there is a lot of pressure that comes off you when you don't have to worry about money coming in from, from the sport you're doing. And then you can kind of really do it about, I'm here to make myself happy. I'm not, I'm not here to, to make everybody else happy anymore. And we all go through that, that stage, you know? Yeah. Right now I'm here just to, I want to end my career on a high note. I don't want to be that guy who's, 
coulda, shoulda, woulda, uh, if I had this, if I had that. You know what? I'm going to sacrifice everything I have now and try to make it happen. And if it happens, I'm I'm a happy dude. And if it doesn't happen, I'm still a happy guy. How much time do you have left in the sport? You keep talking about this ending and ending on a high note. Like, How much more do you want to go? Um, I'm going to be 32 this year. Um, I, I want to at least make it to 35, you know, 35, 36. Oh, yeah, plenty of time left. Okay. Yeah. Um, just uh, it all depends on my body too. Right now, I got some good strength and conditioning going on. Um, I'm not going as much live as I used to. Smart. I um I I I tend to go if if my body starts to hurt, my back starts to hurt, my neck starts to hurt, my shoulders starts to hurt. I will tail off a little bit and stay away from the room and just do other stuff. That's smart. Come with age, comes wisdom. That's yes, how sir. It works. All right, Dimashio, thanks for coming on here. I appreciate it. Uh, it's been a long time since I've talked to you. It's my fault. I'm, I'm not a very good friend. I'm being a, a complete stranger because I'm, I'm so busy trying to be selfish. So I will do a better job staying in touch with you. Even Neil came out here to visit us. What's up? I know, man. I'm, I'm a complete effing jack off. I know. It's, and it's sad, too, because not only, is, not only is Greg Jackson like, hey, you need to come out. You need to come out. But then Winklejohn is like, what the hell? Like, everyone's inviting you out. Like, why aren't you coming? It's just, you know, I'm just one of those guys that's, it's, I don't plan very well. My day is, my life is pretty much day by day. And so I just kind of have to float. And it's, it's like, oh yeah, I need to go to, you know, buy a ticket last minute. It's like, eh, I'm not going to go. I'll just wait. I'm the same way. My girlfriend gets mad at me because I'm last minute and then I get in trouble because I forget to tell her and I should have told her. But I'm like, I just barely know right now, but I have to tell her. That's how it goes. <laughs> That's how it goes. I'm glad, I'm glad that um, um, you finally have a girlfriend. I'm glad you feel more comfortable now with who you are. It's, uh, you know, <laughs> Our, our breakup hurt me. It hurt my soul. I was very upset when we broke up, but I forgive you for, for leaving. Because you did leave for an awesome chick. You really did leave for an awesome girl, so it's okay. Hey, Frank, your, your skin was too light. I had to go darker. <laughs> I'm tanning, though, damn it. I'm tanning. I'm spending a lot of time in the sun. It's just, no, it's never enough for you. I'm never good enough for you. I never was. That's how it works. <laughs> All right, bud. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for coming on here. We'll talk to you in a little oh, bit. Nice talking to you.